Our top story tonight continues to be a law enforcement shooting and pursuit in Yancey County. It sent a state trooper to the hospital and left a suspect dead. The trooper was shot during a chase near US 19 and New Dale Church Road. And right now the trooper is in the hospital with serious injuries, but he's expected to survive. News 13's Andrew James has been following this story all throughout the day, and he's live tonight in Yancey County. And Andrew, we now know more about the trooper. Yes, Trooper Kevin Glenn is a nine year veteran with Highway Patrol out here tonight. Crews have now cleared the scene. They were out here for the majority of the afternoon and the night. We do also have some new information that we've learned. The suspect in this case has died. That is according to the Yancey County Sheriff's Office Facebook page. Here's what we know about what happened today. Trooper Kevin Glenn was taken to the hospital with serious but non life threatening injuries after being shot Tuesday afternoon. According to Highway Patrol, Trooper Glenn was helping with the chase when he was shot while preparing to deploy a tire deflation device. We do have some viewer video showing the scene as police swarm the area. I spoke to the Yancey County Emergency Services Director about the response from numerous first responders in this area. It, it, nobody cares who's getting the credit. Everybody just wants to see the job get done. The Sheriff's Department's helping out the fire department. Fire department's helping out rescue squad rescues. It's just, it's just one of the great things about where we live. Now, officials tell me they've been working two separate scenes, one where the shooting took place and another where the suspect crashed. We are asking for more information about this suspect and the reason for the chase. And obviously, this investigation is just in its beginning stages. We're working to get more information on this. We'll bring you the latest developments just as soon as we get them. Tonight, we now know what's next for the Ramada Inn and some of our homeless community in Asheville. The city council voted to move forward with permanent supportive housing. Now, the city previously proposed a low barrier temporary shelter. News 13's Hannah McKenzie explains what a California company plans to do to help the homeless. Asheville City Council making this decision after a four hour long meeting and with not much time to spare as the city's contract to purchase this property expires in less than 24 hours. The Ramada Inn homeless shelter debate now settled. That concludes this item. Asheville City Council voting Tuesday night to move forward with a permanent supportive housing plan for members of the homeless community. Thank you to everyone who worked really, 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 really hard and is going to continue to work really hard on this. The city allocating American Rescue Plan Act funding in the amount of $556,000 to maintain existing shelter options through March of 2022 and $500,000 for the next year of support services for permanent housing. An additional $1 million coming from unspecified funds will support the project into 2025. Per existing plans, the building will provide 50 plus units of permanent supportive housing to homeless veterans and 50 plus units for chronically homeless individuals. The decision comes just hours ahead of the city's December 15th deadline to purchase the property on River Ford Parkway. City Council also agreeing to reassign the real estate contract to Shangri-La Industries Incorporated. The California-based company buys and renovates hotels into housing. In exchange, Shangri-La Industries will adhere to a 50-year permanent supportive housing deed restriction. They would also reimburse the city $85,000 for due diligence and earnest money. Shangri-La's nonprofit partner, Step Up on 2nd Street Incorporated, also of California, will provide on-site services for residents such as counseling and substance abuse recovery support. About a dozen people calling in, many expressing their concerns, citing lack of transparency by the council, a rushed decision, and clearing homeless camps amid a lack of emergency shelters and freezing conditions. So what's next? Shangri-La will likely close on this property early next year and begin renovations shortly after. According to the city, they believe people will start moving in by the end of 2022. Several city council members, though, did point out the need for low barrier and emergency shelters is still great in our area and it needs to be addressed. New at 530 amid mounting complaints over downtown crime, Asheville's police chief writes to the district attorney asking why so many cases are being dismissed. The memo was obtained by News 13 through a public records request. News 13's Kimberly King joins us live from near Pritchard Park, where a fight broke out just days ago. Kim, what do you know? 
That's right. Police reports show that one man struck another man in the head with rebar, sending him to the hospital. A merchant here that I spoke with today tells me she's had more cases of shoplifting in the last five months than she's had in the 30 years she's been operating a business downtown. And now that Chief Zach's memo has been made public, he tells me tonight he is having productive conversations with the DA. Police Chief David Zack has written Buncombe District Attorney Todd Williams a letter airing concerns over what the chief believes is a lack of case prosecutions. He lays out on City of Asheville Police Department letterhead. On December 1st, Zack stated, during the past several fiscal years, the DA's office dismissed nearly every charged case involving criminal behavior routinely complained about by downtown businesses and residents. In fiscal 21 of 113 soliciting and begging arrests, made, 100 percent were dismissed, 96 percent of second-degree trespassing cases dismissed, and 100 percent of public urination cases dismissed. Well, obviously he's got a point. He's upset because his officers are working hard trying to help the downtown merchants. Steve Lindsay, a local defense attorney, however, knows the DA also faces challenges adjudicating more serious felony cases where defendants fill the jail he says can impact need for dismissal of lesser crimes. The district attorney has a job that has to be done. They only have so many resources, right? We've got to get people out of the system. But the chief also writes, to date, I have received no notice from you, any judge or attorney employed by your office, that APD personnel are making inappropriate arrests. Justin Souther manages Malaprop's bookstore. Like, I understand the frustration from the police that that's their job and that's not happening, but also as a taxpayer, like, I don't know if I would personally want to be spending money on prosecuting things like that. The solution is for the sheriff, the county commissioners, city council, the district attorney and the chief of police to sit down and say, how are we going to handle this responsibly? Bud Crawford has owned the Earth Guild downtown for 50 years. He reviewed the chief's letter. Clearly those numbers push you in the direction of thinking, gee, they ought to be convicting a few more people. It would seem like they could probably do a little bit more to pull some of those people off the streets and make lives a little easier for the rest of us. Now, in the last half hour, we have received a letter written by uh, Todd Williams, the DA, who wrote back directly to the chief stating, respectfully, the statistics presented in your letter display a lack of understanding of the criminal justice process. I suggest we follow up with a thorough conversation to, sh to ensure we share an understanding of the multiple paths forward and the ways you and I can work together to be responsive to our community's concerns. Now, while there remains a staffing crisis with patrol officers at APD tonight, Asheville Police Chief David Zack told me about an hour ago that he does plan to look closely and potentially add more officers on duty in the downtown area. But he says so many officers are working so much overtime that it remains a challenge. He says, though, that the DA and he are having constructive conversations and moving forward.